Are you looking at buying a house in Ottawa and not sure where to start? Don't understand the process. What do you do first? How does it actually work? Well, in this short video, I'm gonna break it all down for you from start to finish. LiamSwords.com. We haven't met. My name's Liam Swords. I've sold over a thousand homes since 2002. So let's hop into the content. When I get asked, you know, Liam, how do I buy a house? How does it work? I think the natural thing that comes up is, well, you have to get a mortgage. You have to know what you can shop with. How much money do you have? And yes, that is an important aspect of this. But there's way more that goes into a successful buying process. And I'm gonna take you through our process when we're working actively with buyers. Not to say you have to contact us, this is simply an opportunity for you to take a look at how the process actually works as you start your journey down the buying process. We break our buying journey down into three separate chapters. The first chapter is the actual explaining the process. The second is preparing to go hunting for property. And number three is actively looking for that home. So let's take a closer look at the first part when we are explaining the process. So first off, you wanna break out your wants and needs. Needs are things you actually have to have and wants are things that would be nice. So a need would be you need minimum two bathrooms. A need would be minimum three bedrooms. A need would be minimum two parking spaces because both you and your partner have a car. Those are needs, those are must haves locked in. Then there's wants. You know, it would be nice to have an ensuite bathroom. It would be nice to have, or we would want a finished basement with a fireplace. We would want a main floor powder room. These are all important to identify of wants you would like, but not so much something you need. You know, I would say the most successful buyers out there are looking for about put an 80% solution. If you can find 80% of what you're looking for, then I would strongly recommend you move on that. It is impossible to find a 100% solution. You know, you could say, well, I'm just gonna go to a brand new house because it's gonna have everything and everything's gonna be new. And that is correct. However, new homes come with a lot of deficiencies that you're dealing with and possibly the quality and workmanship wasn't aligned with your expectations as a buyer. So best advice when you're out hunting for property is look for that 80% solution, identify what are the actual needs and what are the wants for the property. Another part of going through that initial phase is taking a look at timelines. So when do you and your family need to be into the property buy? A typical closing date is about 60 days. So most sellers that have their home on the market are expecting to close within 60 days. So that'll give you some runway and some visibility into the length of time from the offer being accepted until you actually close is two months. Another thing to keep in mind as a buyer is a typical down payment for a property in Ottawa is approximately $10,000. This offer is due within 24 hours after acceptance, but the cash needs to be liquid in that they will cash that check or e-transfer. That is when consideration is moved from you as a buyer over to the seller. That money is cashed and held in trust and applied towards your purchase price on closing. So those are some things that are important to consider at the initial phase of going through the buying journey and really explaining that process. What are the needs? What are the wants? What's the timeline? What's the deposit? So once the buyer consultation is done, then as a buyer, you move into the preparation stage. So this is when you've identified really what you want for the property. Then we get into more preparing to go to market to look for that property. And that's broken down really into three separate steps. Number one, setting up the portal. Number two, getting the mortgage pre-approval. And then number three, the alignment call. So what you would do next is you would set up your portal, identifying specifically what you want. And this is done by your realtor. We do it all the time for buyers where we can specifically identify the areas, price point, style of property, and then go through all of your haves and wants to set up a filter within the multiple listing service so that we're highlighting the specific properties that match your criteria. Then the next step is pre-approval. So as I said at the beginning of this video, we have to know what we can shop with. It's not like you go shopping for gifts for someone without a budget in mind. 
Well, it's the same thing for buying real estate. You know, what is the amount of money you have that you can afford to buy for the property? So how that's done is through a pre-approval, whether that's through one of the large banks or you can go through a mortgage broker in that sense where they will take a look at a number of aspects. Ultimately, they're looking at your credit and likelihood to be able to service that debt. There's different ratios they're looking at, total debt service ratio, gross debt service ratio. There's different percentages and I'm not gonna get into that on this video, but it's highly recommended for you to reach out to either one of the big banks and speak with a mortgage specialist there or reach out to a mortgage broker. They will quickly be able to collect that data from you and be able to give you what's called a pre-approval. That is a dollar amount that you can borrow against. So it's not to say that it's a 100% commitment. It's not called a pre-qualification, it's a pre-approval. This gives you the green light to hop out, start shopping for property, knowing that you have that type of money to play with to buy property. Another thing that's highly recommended in the Ottawa market, we're seeing it all the time, is having a family letter. Let me unpack this for you. So a family letter is the background of, of you, and if you're buying it with someone else, you and your partner, and you and your partner and your family, you and your partner and family and dog, like you want to put together a story of who you are and what this property means to you. Pro tip, a picture is the best. If you have a photo of yourself or you and your family or you and your family and your dog, that goes a long way. Now, in your letter, you're gonna talk about how long you've been looking for property, the area, how it speaks to you. It'll be more of a general letter at this moment as you're preparing because you don't know really what the address of the property is. You're still in your preparation phase, but this is an excellent step to check off right now so you're ready. So when you find that property and you're moving forward with an offer, that you have that family letter that you can just grab from the document, tweak it a little bit to modify it so it's specific right to that property, and then boom, that goes right with your offer. You'd be surprised, I see it all the time. Offers that have a family letter, they're able to get a much better negotiation completed. If you're in a multiple offer, it goes even further. Like there's a lot of emotion in buying and selling real estate. And most sellers are really attached to the property. And it's an area of the transaction that is missed. It's so easy. And sellers are always curious, who are these buyers? What are they about? Do they have family? Are they planning on just flipping the property or are they gonna plant roots here? So having that family letter going with your offer is, I would say, is a must. Anytime I buy a property, we do that. Friends, family, clients of mine, we always encourage the family letter. So that's part of the preparation stage, finishing off with that family letter. Now we move into the third and final stage of the buying journey, and that's the active hunting for the property. That's where you know most people actually start is they just hunt for property before doing all this preparation which is is not the way to do it trust me but you do you so once all the preparation is done we get into hunting for the property so we break this down into four different stages number one being obviously out hunting for property we like to encourage clients to look at as many properties as they can on a tour and what i mean by that is if you see a property you want to see try and batch say three to eight homes together in that tour. Instead of looking at one house today, one house tomorrow, one house the next day, one house the next day, the benefit of looking at multiple properties in one given shot allows for the buyers, for you as a buyer, to really confirm what you like and don't like. Like, oh, I like this property because the one we just went through 10 minutes ago didn't have this. Or I don't like this property because the, the third one we saw today had a much more open feel to it. And that curb appeal, you can't beat that. So in terms of touring property, we always like to encourage clients and buyers to look at multiple properties in one shot. Sometimes there's just one home that you want to see. So I wouldn't encourage you to just add property in for no reason. But as you look at getting into the process of buying a property and curious how it all works, I would strongly encourage you to consider that as putting them all together. Another one is agent relationships. So there's 4,000 realtors right now at time of recording, running around selling property. So having those tight relationships with realtors who specialize in certain pockets is extremely powerful. So 
you're out hunting for property and you're working with your realtor, I'd recommend you ask your realtor like, hey, who's like the agent for that area, like the guru? And why don't we check with them to see if they have any off-market opportunities? We call those pocket listings. So those are properties that are not officially on the market, but they have an interest in selling if they get the right buyer. So check with your realtor or representative to see if they have any contacts who really specialize in a niche area. What I do with all of my buyers is we you know, hot map a certain pocket and then break out, you know, who's the realtor that sells the most amount in there. And then we back out, say the top five and I contact them all. Hey, so-and-so, you know, I see you're selling a lot of, of product in this area. I have an active pre-qualified buyer looking to make a move in the next zero to 90 days. What type of off-market opportunities do you have? And they'd be like, well, Liam, we got this, 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 this. Take that all down and then report back. A third way that you can be active in the hunting process when you're looking for property is actual door knocking. So once you've brought down your, your sort of criteria, you know, like as you start as a buyer, you're looking at everything and then you start to zero in specifically on what you're looking for, it might not be available. It's like buying a used car. You know, you can only buy what's available on that lot. Well, when you're buying a property, you can only buy what's available on the market outside of going to brand new construction and then you're waiting anywhere from 12 to 18 to 36 months. So do you have that timeline? Most people don't. So the way that we can overcome that is once we niche down specifically to the areas, you just actively go out and door knock. So if you're doing this on your own, go for it. You know, you just find a the pocket, you just start door knocking. Hi, I'm so-and-so. You know, my family are looking to move in this area. We're pre-approved, we're ready to go. We're looking at closing in the next 90 days. Are you interested in selling? Most people will say, no, I'm not interested. And that's cool. But where you can really advance this idea and compound the effect is totally, you know, do you know anyone on the street that might be interested in selling? Any neighbors that might be interested? You'd be surprised how people are willing to help people. I usually like to leave a, a business card, obviously being in the game, we have business cards all the time, so I will leave my card with the client. But again, if you're doing this on your own, just give your name and number and say, you know what, do you mind if I give you my name and number? And if you know or hear of anyone on the street, in the area that's considering selling, would you mind passing on my contact info? And most people, once they know you're not selling them something, they are usually all in to help good people find property. And most people like where they live. Most people know the neighbors. So they can cut through so much of that red tape for you. And then you have a bunch of people looking on your behalf. We've had so many successful sales annually on this aspect of like going through people to find property of off-market opportunities. The last aspect is the analysis and negotiation. This is where the, the most value comes when either working with a realtor or a representative consultant who's helping you out is, is identifying like, what is the property actually worth? There's a big difference between a list price and a sale price. In Ottawa right now, it's 98%. So if you look at a property, you can expect 2% to come off of that. But Ottawa is made up of a number of micro neighborhoods. Some neighborhoods might be 99% of list price to sale price. Some neighborhoods might be 95% of list price to sale price. So whenever you find the one, what you will want to do is identify what's it actually worth. And how that's done is you look at the data and you analyze the sold history. You're comparing apple to apple and then making adjustments for the features and benefits that that property has it sold in relation to the subject property. Then you might have to do a time value of money adjustment if we're talking about say during COVID days, you know, when the market was just going crazy, we can't take that as authentic true data just because that was in a hyper market, which was not a realistic Ottawa market in that sense. So analyzing the data, the sold data to be able to prepare you to come forward as a buyer and negotiate from a strong stance to make sure you're getting fair market value for the property. Well, folks, that wraps up the buying process and really taking buyers through that journey from, hey, I wanna buy a house to, wow, we have our dream home. So hopefully that was helpful. This is not proprietary to Liam Swords. This is just 22 years of, of working directly with buyers. We put together this process 
So feel free to follow it. I will drop a PDF in the comments below where you can print it off and work through it completely on your own. If you'd like to reach out, we'd be more than happy to help, but this is just a guide to help you work through from, as I say, like, gee, let's buy a house to, wow, we have our dream home and not missing anything in the middle. Thanks for stopping by and we'll catch you on the next video.